hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. I'm also an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA with a private practice in West LA. And today we're going to talk about the class 2 composite preparation on tooth number 30 MO for the ADEX examination. And this is called an RTX tooth. It's made by Acadental. It is a very sophisticated design with a hard enamel outer shell, a softer dentin inner shell, a pulp chamber, and caries. So let's take a look at how we will approach this preparation. I'm going to start with a punch cut with a diamond burr. I like diamond burrs on these RTX teeth because they punch through easily. I'm going to follow this little jogging outline form as I move distally and then I will extend into the buccal and lingual grooves and into the distal buccal and distal lingual grooves. So we'll end up having a rough outline form like this and then I'm going to turn my attention to the box area. So we widen the area near the box and then start dropping down, undermining the enamel, chipping it away, and remembering that this is a composite preparation so you're going to have flares. The exit angles are not going to look like an amalgam. You're probably not even going to have S-curves because composite performs extremely well with obtuse angles. So this will be the final outline form. Now you're going to have to, once you're about finished with the preparation, you'll notice that there will be decay that will extend on the axial wall and gingival wall. And you're going to have to extend gingivally first to remove this caries and then you're going to remove the remaining caries off the axial wall. So it'll be a two-part removal process. Let's take a look at the tooth from the side so you can get an idea of approximately where the decay is located. And of course, it's going to be different on every one of these teeth. But you can see it's located just below the contact area, as we would imagine, on a natural tooth. Let's draw on here where the caries would be located. So right about here, I think that would be pretty clear for all of you to see. And from here, we're going to imagine that our outline form is going to have a convergent wall on the facial and a, an orthogonal wall on the lingual. In other words, making a 90 degree angle. And then your gingival will go straight across. Now, what you're going to find in this preparation is the decay will extend onto the gingival wall and you will need to drop your gingival wall more gingivally. We don't say deeper, we say more gingival extension is required. And that will be done with a high speed because it's essentially it's not really caries removal so much, it's outline form. We've got a brand new burr block for the 8X exam. I think this is really cool. And having worked with many students, getting them ready to take the 8X exam, I have put together every possible diamond and carbide and uh, shape for all the preparations, whether it's the operative procedure on the molar or it's the uh, PFM or the FGC or the uh, all ceramic restoration. You've got everything you need right in this one bird block. We even have round burrs to remove caries and some burrs to do some shaping of your final composite once you place the restoration. The only thing you're really missing is the putty and some of the polishing abrasives and discs that could be very helpful for this particular examination. We're going to start with a 330D because I find this spur to penetrate through the hard enamel extremely well. Now remember the 330D is a little bit longer than the normal 330. It's about 2 millimeters long. There's 1.5. You can see that is much longer than 1.5. So we're looking at about 2 millimeters. And that's fine because when you're, when you're prepping for this tooth, you don't have to sink the entire burr in. You can actually have the burr go in part way, and you can always go back and make the preparation just a little bit deeper when you're doing your refinement and smoothing of the outline form.
yes, you can see the, uh, the basic form of the outline. We're, we're not taking a lot of care to smooth the outline at this stage. We want to turn our attention to the box area. So I'm going to use the 330 to just open up a little bit of a cylindrical shape like this. And by the way, look, you can see the carry showing up there already. And I'm going to switch over to the 555 diamond. And this is an amazing burr. It's, it's, it's like a 55 burr, but it's diamond. It's super small. It cuts really well and it lasts a lot longer than a typical diamond would for a crown prep because you're just doing such a small area. By the way, burrs really only last about five preps for uh, diamonds and about two to three preps for carbides. Just in case you're wondering what's happening with your burrs, make sure you always start with a nice, sharp, brand new burr. And take a look at that. That is really cool. We've broken the gingival. We've left a little shell. And you could use something to protect the adjacent tooth. I think that that is really cool to do. I didn't do it here because I think it's just easier for everyone to see the preparation when I don't have a little interguard or some kind of a fender wedge in there protecting the adjacent tooth, but that is completely acceptable. Yeah, so once you've uh, started to extend the burr buccally and lingually, you'll get an idea of the extension of the caries. And as I mentioned in the preview, we are going to find the decay laying on the gingival wall, necessitating a gingival extension greater than normal, and we're also going to find the caries on the axial wall. We don't want to remove any caries right now. We want to focus on getting the box formed the way we want it, and remember now, utilizing the 10, 6, 14 enamel hatchet, we're going to not chop it this way, but we're going to chop it this way. Because we, you don't want to have an undermined enamel exit angle. You want, you want to have it flared just a little bit so that the uh, tooth structure is really strong. You'll have a really good bondable surface there by having the enamel slicing outward a little bit and we're going to utilize the a really sharp hatchet here. Now you really got to be careful because it's it's common for this brittle enamel to break. So I like to just do the little sturdiment chip where I wiggle the hatchet back and forth and I knock off the uh, proximal shell and now I can turn my attention to getting the exit angles just where I want them. Sometimes you need to deepen the axial wall if your hatchet doesn't fit and that is perfectly okay to do. In fact, uh, it's quite normal. So here we are just chipping this away on the facial. And on the lingual, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut up and let the uh, sound of the hatchet working against the tooth uh, give you an idea of how much force is required. So it's uh, a fair amount of force, but it's controlled because you have a good finger rest and you're using a really sharp instrument so you don't inadvertently push down through the gingival, which can be a really scary moment. Do, do you see now how the decay needs to be removed at the gingival? You go gingively first. You know, when you're listening to this, you're probably picking up on the fact that the handpiece is not going at full speed. And that's how I've been prepping teeth for a long time. And it gives you a lot of tactile feedback. It also allows you to prepare the tooth with a little bit more control. Uh, this is where like electric handpieces really work well too. You know, now that our gingival is extended beyond the caries, and this would be something I would probably do with the instructor's uh, you know, buy-in, I would uh, note that I wanted to extend more gingivally, and then I would uh, get permission from the floor examiner to do this modification because it's a bit further gingivally than I normally would do. 
And now I'm just using the RGS uh, burr, the 330 RGS, to smooth all of the irregularities of the occlusal and get it looking the way we want. Now with the preparation essentially done, we're now going to turn our attention to caries removal. And for this, I'm going to use a four round burr. This is one of the burrs on the burr block. I don't think a six round burr is a good choice because it's really large and I think it's a little too big for this particular exam for most of the caries I think you're going to encounter. You're going to need to use something along the lines of maybe a four round or a two round. So are we done? And that's the key point. People fail this exam because they don't pay attention to tug back. In other words, you have to push the explorer into the carries along the DEJ and check everything. It's not just a visual, it's a tactile. That's what separates the passers from the non-passers on, on this examination. So we're gonna utilize the burr a little bit more because there was some soft areas. I was actually able to peel back this sclerotic dentin that wasn't even stained. And now I've got something that looks really super clean but once again, make sure you check this because you can fool yourself and go, wow, it looks so great. There's no stains in there. So this looks like it's ready to, for me to fill with composite, but uh, don't be tempted to move on. I want you to go back to that Sharp Explorer and go ahead and push it and it should feel just as hard as here. Everything should be hard and firm. Soft areas have to be removed unless doing so would create a pulp exposure. And that's gonna require floor examiner interaction. You're gonna to have to talk about why you think it'll be a pulp exposure and why you would need to leave a little bit of caries behind as long as it's completely circumscribed by really good, clean tooth structure. You notice the extension is less than 0.4. This is a composite prep. This is a very small extension with flared exit angles and no S-curve but we still want to have the 1.5 millimeters of depth and we want a nice flat pulpal wall. And I think that basically at this point in, in clinical practice, I will place a glass hydramer liner in that deeper area of the, of the box. But for this examination, there is really no need to do that unless you're dealing with a pulp exposure situation. This is an RGS-3 showing you that we have one millimeter of isthmus and a one millimeter extension buccolingually and then distal buccally, distal lingually. But notice how deep you are actually, significantly more than you would be on an ideal preparation for amalgam or composite. But this is a real world situation and I think it's pretty cool. So I hope you've enjoyed this ADEX update in part two of this video. I am going to do the restoration. So that should be coming out really soon and I hope you uh, we're able to watch that. Most of the stuff I talk about today, you can get videos, you can get supplies, you can attend courses uh, on our website. Uh, we have tons of amazing CE courses. They always fill and they always get good reviews. Thanks so much, everybody.